How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Detroit Lions franchise on Madden 22. My name is Football Fan Forever, and it's time for our season recap and off-season preview video as we get ready for the off-season live stream this coming Saturday. In this video, we will take a look back at the past season. We only played 8 games after simulating the first 9, so I've got numbers and figures pulled together from those videos as well, so we can take a look at our team in the context of the series that has been published. But we'll also take a look at the stats from around the league, see the league leaders and the results of the NFL playoffs up to but not including the Super Bowl. If you are new to the series or perhaps even new to the channel, you are joining at a very fun time. I always look forward to the off season and the first off season in a series is always in my opinion the most impactful. So before we get on to the numbers and such, there are a couple of re-signings that I wanted to take care of even before the final chance at re-signing happens in the offseason. Jack Fox is one of the best players on our team and one of the best punters in the league. So re-signing him was a priority for me and he does agree to a deal. I also take a look at Tracy Walker, who's our starting strong safety this season. We'll see later on, he actually played pretty well for us over the course of the eight games that we did play, and given his veteran presence on this team and what his ratings would look like if morale were not a factor, I think he's worth an investment here. So we dink around a little bit with the numbers before finally deciding on a flat $3 million per year and Walker accepts. So there is one position of need that will not need to be filled in the offseason. And finally, David Blau. I had a lot of interest in bringing him back after he played for us well in relief of Jared Goff and he is re-signed on a two-year contract that's pretty team friendly. Moving ahead into the playoffs, uh, just a note if you are doing some kind of rebuild yourself, even if coach firing is off, you can still get fired through the in-game events like Black Monday and stuff like that, but if you ignore them, then your job security is just fine. So just don't click into it and you should be okay. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at our schedule this season. Remember that we picked up halfway through the season having made our record as close to what the Lions record was in real life at the point that the series started and we managed to win only one game over the last eight that we played. It was a 33-27 overtime victory over the Denver Broncos. But most of the games were pretty close here. But we are a far cry away from being able to make the NFL playoffs. A one win season is not going to do it, especially in a 17 game season. And especially not in the uber competitive NFC North. It was a three team race for most of the season and Green Bay ends up representing the NFC North as the number four seed in the playoffs. We also see that Trevor Lawrence is able to guide the Jacksonville Jaguars to a playoff berth while the Kansas City Chiefs and the Dallas Cowboys take the number one seed in the AFC and NFC respectively. Obviously we were not close to that level of success, but in order to get a better idea of what our individual team stats look like, I went into Microsoft Excel and basically condensed the results of the games that we did play. And if you've been following the series thus far, there should be very few surprises from these compiled numbers. Jared Goff did not play very well and our passing offense was not great. Meanwhile, our rushing game really took off after DeAndre Swift got injured, actually. Jamal Williams had over 6 yards per carry and 7 touchdowns in 8 games. And that has me very optimistic about our rushing attack heading into next season. In regard to our wide receivers and tight ends, there's a big drop off in production after TJ Hawkinson and Quintez Cephas, with Amon Ross St. Brown showing some potential at the end of the season, but having me want to bring in another receiving target this offseason. Our offensive line play was a bright spot for the offense. I'm beginning to think that they played well above their ratings. I might be looking at some of the pass blocking sliders, but I'm overall very happy with the state of our offensive line. Our defense is the area that I look forward to investing in the most this offseason. 
we really struggled getting after the quarterback and did not have a lot of takeaways. We also really struggled to make plays behind the line of scrimmage here. Danny Trevathan led the team with five tackles for a loss along with Trey Flowers, but we only had one person with more than three sacks over eight games. We also only had a pair of interceptions and did not contest a lot of passes. But we also knew that this would be a learning year for our trio of young cornerbacks, and I think there is some potential there. On to league-wide stats, Tom Brady and Russell Wilson are the only two quarterbacks to throw for more than 5,000 yards, but there are a whole lot who were very close as well. Jameis Winston, Justin Herbert, and Patrick Mahomes coming within 100 yards of the 5,000 mark. And a whole bunch of other quarterbacks crossing the 4,000 yard threshold as well. In fact, with a few exceptions, just about every single quarterback threw for over 4,000 yards this season. With a couple of the exceptions being Jared Goff, who didn't play in all 17 games, Zach Wilson, who really struggled as a rookie, and the duo of Chris Streveler and Kyler Murray, who basically split time as Murray dealt with injuries. There's also the 1-2 combination of Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not really sure what was going on there, if it was a mid-season switch or not. But regardless, the 49ers didn't have a very good passing attack this year. Tom Brady also leads the league in passing touchdowns with 47. And he made a very good case to be the league MVP in what might be his final season. Jared Goff ends up leading the league in interceptions with 28, but a chunk of those came from before we actually started playing. I think he had 17 interceptions going into the first game of our series. But he still threw 11 picks in just 6 games for us, so I think he would have ended up with around 28 or 30 interceptions if that was the case. I guess that's one of the rare times that the sim stats actually match up with the in-game results that we're playing with here. But there's a new rushing king here, or I should say a new single season rushing record, as Derrick Henry takes advantage of the extra game to top Eric Dickerson's mark by 3 yards. Henry also found the end zone a whopping 24 times, and it has to be considered one of, if not the best, rushing performances in the history of the league. Also, if it's not obvious by now, don't expect to see any Detroit Lions lighting up the leaderboards here. That's just what happens when you have a 1-16 and 16 season. Uh, we're just not getting any individual standout performances just yet, but I'm optimistic that that will change in the coming years as we rebuild this team and infuse talent into every area of the roster. Looks like there were a couple of 97-yard touchdowns this year. Oh my goodness. That's cool. Uh, sim stats. More sim stats here. Devontae Adams leads the league with 1,400 yards. Interestingly enough, there are only two receivers who top the 100 catch mark. But plenty who go above 1,000 yards, and again, having the extra game in hand is super nice for milestones like that. I won't even go through all of these who made the 1,000 yard threshold or not. Just know that none of them suited up for the Detroit Lions this season. I guess both Quintez Cephas and TJ Hawkinson were close, but that only counts for horseshoes and hand grenades. On to defense, Alex Anzalone actually comes in second in the league with 140 total tackles despite missing a game or two for us. Tackles for loss, well we didn't do great in that category, but Cameron Hayward led the league with 27. And there is no new sack record this season either, as Chandler Jones comes up two sacks away from breaking the record. But I still think we'll see that record fall at some point in this series. As for interceptions, there's a whole bunch of people with five. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Kenny Moore, Avante Maddox, Jaire Alexander, Joe Schobert, and Jalen Ramsey. One of these is not like the other. Also, the rookie Zaven Collins forces three fumbles to lead the league in that category. As we head on to team stats here, and I'm showing these more just to give a sense for what the rest of the league is doing. I don't really trust the sim numbers, so I did break it down and isolated the numbers from the games that we did play. 
But I think, regardless, we would have ended up with one of the worst offenses in the league. It did get a little bit better for us after we stopped simming, but number 30 ranked offense in the league, we were not a top 20 offense by any means. And our defense has etched its place in history as among the worst ever. Again, we're looking at a 17-game season versus a 16-game season for much of the NFL's history, but we had the second-worst scoring defense in NFL history in terms of points per game and yards allowed per game. We certainly have a lot of areas that we can build and improve upon here as we look to turn this bottom-ranked unit around. We gave up an average of 145 rushing yards in the eight games that we played and averaged 287 passing yards against over the same span. As bad as our run defense was, I actually think our pass defense is worse because we spent a lot of those games playing from behind. Teams obviously tend to run the ball more when they're ahead and are trying to drain the clock. So if we'd been putting our opponents in situations where they would pass the ball more often, these numbers could be even worse. Not only did we lack anything close to a number one cornerback to shut down the likes of Devontae Adams or DK Metcalf, we also really struggled to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. We are solidly middle of the pack in terms of sacks according to this metric, but only 13 of those 32 sacks came in the final eight games. So that was one area where the simulated team outperformed us by a fair margin. I would like to stress that this isn't a problem we'll run into going forward in terms of having to compare the gameplay versus the simulated games because we're going to be playing all 17 games of this season. But season one, I didn't want this to drag on for too long, so it made sense to pick up where the Detroit Lions were in real life when we started this series. Another area that really needs to get better for us is the turnover category. We were a whopping minus 27 this season, and we had 13 giveaways to just three takeaways in the eight games that we played. So that's another area we can improve on going into next season. So earlier I promised team totals for the eight games that we did play and here's just some of the numbers that I was able to crunch. I doubt there are many big surprises here if you've been following the series, but it does point to the fact that our passing offense needs to get better and overall our defensive effort can improve a lot as well. So that's enough numbers for now, let's take a look at some other aspects of the franchise as you can now have coaches fired and not just head coaches, there's offensive and defensive coordinators that can be fired. And while this did not age well here, the Dolphins cleaned house. Uh, the Dolphins were not very competitive in this installment, so that's not necessarily a surprise like it was in real life. There is one more name to add to this list, however, and it's not James Delgado. Obviously, we can't get fired. I've turned user coach firing off. But if we had an all-time historically bad defense, someone's got to take the blame. So Dean Fuller, our defensive coordinator, is going to get his walking papers here. This is also kind of an experiment to figure out just what goes on and what kind of options you have when you fire one of your coordinators, but I think it makes realistic sense as well, so I didn't feel too bad about the move. So after looking around the available defensive coordinators, I start honing in on my candidate of choice, and that would be Craig Taylor here. He's got Mike Tomlin's playbook, which is a 3-4. That's a system that we run. And he's got a nice background working with defensive linemen. He's got five different skills in that tree. So I had a lot of interest in bringing him in because that is one area that can help improve both our run defense and our pass defense. It also gives me an excuse to overhaul our defensive playbook as well to try and get some different formations and personnel sets on the field. So welcome to the Detroit Lions, Craig Taylor. Good luck with this unit. After simulating ahead a couple of weeks, we have more or less figured out who the final four teams are and Green Bay is still playing. They blew out the Carolina Panthers and then destroy the number one seed Dallas Cowboys. 
Meanwhile, Tom Brady's career may have come to an end after a 31-21 loss to the Arizona Cardinals, which wouldn't have been all that surprising if it hadn't been for the fact that Kyler Murray is injured and Chris Streveler, in his second year out of South Dakota, is leading this Arizona Cardinals team to an NFC Championship berth. Fast forward one more week and Green Bay now has fallen victim to Chris Streveler. Arizona wins a heart-stopping game at home against the Packers and will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl against Lamar Jackson's Baltimore Ravens. There were 34 fourth quarter points scored in the NFC Championship game with Arizona scoring 20 of them and right now it looks like it's Chris Streveler just not turning the ball over that has been the reason for this Arizona team having as much success as it has. James Conner has also been tearing it up on the ground over 8 yards a carry and it's clear that Arizona has built a roster with enough depth that even losing Kyler Murray isn't enough to slow him down. This is where I wish that Madden would let you watch computer versus computer games because I think it'll be a really solid Super Bowl and I'd love to see this Arizona team play again because as impressive as they've been with Streveler under center, they're going to get Kyler Murray back for the Super Bowl because he's got a week, the Pro Bowl week specifically, to rest his dislocated hip. So apparently the only thing that can stop the Strebler Cinderella story is the return of Kyler Murray. We technically had two pro bowlers this year, but none of them were actually recognized at their correct position, and none of them were actually recipient of the pro bowl experience boost that you get. I don't know if this is Madden's way of trying to emulate the fact that every team gets at least one pro bowler in real life, but Amon Ross St. Brown is voted as the kick returner for the NFC, while wide receiver Tom Kennedy, who did not return a single punt for us this season, is named the punt returner for the NFC. So it's all things it's kind of a wash, I guess, because they didn't get the experience boost that you normally get if you're named to the Pro Bowl, so it's fine. But just kind of weird that the game chose those two players to be our representatives. I know we returned a lot of kicks this year, but they weren't even our kick and punt returners. So, not really sure what happened there, but we'll get some legitimate pro bowlers here, hopefully as early as next season. Year 1 can be difficult to watch, and this season was no exception. But there are brighter days ahead if you are a Detroit Lions fan, and I'm really looking forward to the offseason this year. Last but certainly not least, we get to look at the annual awards. Derrick Henry beats out the likes of Lamar Jackson and Tom Brady to win an MVP award, the first of his career. The coach of the year goes to Urban Meyer. Man, this did not age well either. I would have given it to Matt Rule here went 11 and 6 with Sam Darnold as his quarterback. Offensive player of the year goes to Chris McCaffrey. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. We'll just breeze through these real quick. There shouldn't be too many surprises given the sim stats that you saw earlier. Ifatu Melifanu actually finishes fourth in defensive rookie of the year voting and may have actually won it if he'd been able to put together a full season worth of work. The only rookie on our offensive side of the ball to get consistent playing time was Panay Sewell and in true uh, realistic fashion he's not considered at all for Offensive Rookie of the Year because he's a lineman so no surprises there. Chris Streveler vaults into the top 10 top quarterbacks in the NFC and his legend continues to grow. Christian McCaffrey wins best running back he had 20 touchdowns this season and 1800 yards. A lot of Cowboys offensive linemen in the top voting here along with three Buccaneers offensive linemen. Aaron Donald, Chandler Jones, these are household names. Avante Maddox wins best cornerback and Robbie Gold wins best kicker in the NFC. Pop over to the AFC here. Lamar Jackson wins offensive player of the year. Cameron Hayward wins Defensive Player of the Year, Mac Jones Offensive Rookie of the Year for the Patriots, beating out Trevor Lawrence. 
Javen Holland wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. That's not a name I know super well. Patrick Mahomes wins Best Quarterback. Derrick Henry wins Best Running Back. Best Wide Receiver goes to Hunter Renfro. Ronnie Stanley wins Best Offensive Line. Best Defensive Line goes to Cameron Hayward again. Josh Allen wins Best Linebacker. Kenny Moore wins Best Defensive Back. Best Kicker goes to Steven Gostowski. So that is it for our season recap and off-season preview video. I guess it ended up being more of a season recap than an off-season preview video. But we will be having the off-season live stream on Saturday, that is February 5th, at 1 p.m. Central Time. And that is our first opportunity to really start reshaping and rebuilding this roster. I love off-seasons and everything about them, especially in Madden games. Like, that's what got me hooked into franchise mode when I was, like, playing back on Madden 06 and Madden 08 when I was young. So I'm super excited to continue that legacy here on Madden 22, and I invite you to join me on Saturday here. So thank you so much for watching. Let's turn this Detroit Lions team into contenders. That's all I have for this episode. Have a good one, everybody, and like always, I will catch you next time.